you, Tammy Sue Baker, and welcome yes. everyone yes. to our show. That's right, day two with Pastor Troy Brewer. Yes. We are so excited. We love meeting him and his amazing church and yes. all that they've been doing there. And they've been in the, I was going to call it Winter Wonderland, but it was not. <laughs> they didn't call it Winter Wonderland. <laughs> it was like a blizzard snow right. that they had there. That's yeah. right. And cold and, it was and a people blizzard dying and everything else. Blizzard of 21, horrible. yeah. So we're we're having quite a winter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, one of the prophets mentioned. Did you hear him? He said something yes. about. He thought that what's going on, all the weather, all this stuff, it's is cleansing. God's judgment. judgment. Yeah, the judgment of cleansing what's happening here politically in our culture, and it reminds me of when we broke ground. When a few days ago, you like to say, but on your birthday, several weeks ago, and <laughs> all of a sudden, snow started coming down. Yeah. And, you know, we found out the meaning of snow. And it's so prophetic. I, I believe this book that we presented yesterday shows you the timeline of prophecies that have been foretold in Scripture and we are living in one of the most important times in history. I mean, who would ever think that we will live to see this ice storm take place? Uh, you know, no one was ready for that. I, I can say that maybe we were. Can I? Would I be too proud? Yeah, we sort of were. <laughs> but it, it just covered the nation. Yes. It seemed like. 40 Arizona. States. I think Arizona no. missed Except it. Except for Southern Arizona, where I'm from, the desert. Southern Arizona. And okay. also Southern Florida, yeah. where we love to go. But when, when you have 48 states covered with snow, that tells you something prophetically yeah. is happening in the in the spiritual realm. And, you know, people like Pastor Troy and his church and the ministers around that began to do what we've all learned to do as Christians 101, that is serve the people, Amen. that is continue to feed the poor, clothe the naked, visit the prisoners. And that's been the foundation of the church. Do you have any news headlines for today? Oh, because yes. uh, we missed we missed the news line this week. And, uh, you know, Redeeming your timeline. If you didn't order the book yesterday, you need to order it today because this book will give you supernatural skill sets for healing past wounds, calming future anxieties, and discovering rest in the now. Mm. This is a book that we need to calm our systems. Too many people are having Amen. nervous breakdowns, mm -hmm. collapsing, anxieties, and 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 all the things that that people have. And he, on the back of the book, it talks about experience freedom from panic attacks. Panic Amen. attacks are real. They are. They're not some fake thing that you just imagine. And it is a, a, a wonderful thing to be healed of panic attacks. Because I had one. I was a young man helping to start CBN and, and, and the PTO and the right. 700 Club and That's all that right. stuff we did back in those early days. Yes. And God showed me that he could heal that. You know, Jim, how we always say, you know, something is timely. This book is truly timely right now because of what we've all gone through, not just the winter storm, but going through the whole 2020 year and now going into 2021 with um, COVID. And I'll tell you one thing that people are really struggling with the fear of failure. They're struggling. Like, I, I mean, I feel like I failed because I can't keep my business running or whatever it is. Um, and totally struggling with anxiety in a big way. And so, um, and, and, and those who struggle with panic attacks, maybe you've gone through panic attacks. This is the kind of book that you need to help you overcome it because Jesus truly is the overcomer and he, he, of the world. And he wants you to become that overcomer. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Stand up for Jesus. Absolutely. Amen. We're living in a time where, you know, cancel culture is really defining the future of the persecution of the church. 
I'm going to give you some headlines, and then I'm going to end it with two wonderful headlines to give us hope because it's what we have prayed for. The first one comes from Breibart. If you know Kevin Sorbo, he is the former Hercules <laughs> character. But this is what he's saying. Kevin Sorbo on Facebook, blacklisting. He's saying Zuckerberg has more power than our government. That is the head of Facebook. Another one, this is from WND. And this is, I think this headline right here is major that we need to start really thinking about the future, meaning now. This is the headline. They want to live forever. They want to be gods. The warning is coming from Andrew Torba, the CEO of Gab.com, a free speech alternative to the likes of Facebook and Twitter. And this is what Mr. Torba is stressing. He's saying the leaders of big tech considers themselves as powerful as divine beings. And I quote, this is what he's saying, where they want to take it next is they want to enslave or biology. They want to enslave or bodies by implanting chips or altering or DNA and make us complicit while also using the same technology to lift them up as gods. That's what's happening right now, and people need to be aware of it. And he ends it with this. You will be banned from your bank. You will be banned from your Internet. He's warning. What you need to do is start building on alternative platforms and open up another bank account with a local bank or a Christian credit union. They do exist. You need to find them and more need to be built immediately. End of quote. He is sending a warning that, the persecution that we have suffered. 2020, this ministry suffered a persecution that most ministry are now entering to, but we, they begin to ban, us, uh, ban this show from airing on networks, from talking on social media, and all of a sudden, within hours, they begin to freeze our accounts, meaning the credit card processing began to freeze the processing of how you give into this ministry. And then they began to, of course, you know, mock this ministry and, and use their platform to cancel the voice of the Jim Baker show and Jim Baker and this ministry. So he is warning that we need to build our own banks. We need to find creditors that are Christians that are working, that can work with ministries like this one and Pastor Troy's so we won't have to be canceled but I do well, they're want... trying to cancel Franklin Graham. Yes, sir. I, I mean, from his own ministry, from his father's ministry, you know, and it, it's just wrong with people that Franklin does good for millions of people. He feeds people all over the world, Absolutely. my God. Provides and he medical. takes care of the missionaries and provides all kinds of hospital equipment for the missionaries worldwide. Yes. And then they're trying to cancel Franklin Graham, can you believe that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Does nobody get upset over yes. this? Absolutely. This is what we're talking about. I think this is what redeeming the time is. Mm -hmm. We've got to say, no, you can't take our churches. That's right. No, you can't we do it. We're going to stand up. We're going to we're going to work together. Yeah. J just like Pastor Troy Brewers, but during this this terrible snowstorm and and right. ice, <laughs> you know, freezing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were out helping people, rescuing them yes. from the streets. Oh, I love Opened their that. church. They got big generators mm. and got their church heated up. Yeah. And and all the different churches then come together in his church because they had heat and they had the generators yeah. running. And that's what we can do. We're going to say no. Yes. You know, there used to be a song called No Ground. I'm giving yeah. up no ground. I'm not a singer, you know that. <laughs> yeah. But no ground. That's yeah. And that's that's what you're talking about, Bondo. Absolutely. And what we're going to see is churches need to stick together during the time of crisis in order to fight back. I want to end with good news. How about that? Give us hope because we have stood on the grounds of saving babies. And this is according to Life News. Arkansas Senate passes bill 
to ban abortion would save thousands of babies every year. Wow. Amen. Amen. Here's another Amen. one. Yeah. South Carolina. This is from USA Today. South Carolina governor signs a bill banning abortion of fetuses right. after heartbeat Praise. is detected. Wow. Amen. Yes. And I want to leave you with that good news yeah. because we have prayed. We have brought yeah. Janet Porter. That's we have right. stood behind the heartbeat bill. That's and it. you have signed the, the petition. You, you have sure stood have. with Amen. us. And we're seeing the results. And thank God. God for governors to so have we're a still winning somewhere. Amen. Absolutely, <laughs> and, yes. And we need to talk about winning because yes. people, let's win again, well, amen. Where Jim, sin abounds, much more grace abounds. The Bible says. Amen. We just had the most darling, precious little baby born just a few days ago yeah. at Lori's house with this cute little upturned nose. Oh my goodness, he's gorgeous. But um, and 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 his mama named him. Christian. Yeah. And you know, I'm going to tell you what, it, it was just thrilling Amazing. to get that to, a report that he's healthy and mom's healthy. And it's just so you know exciting. The, the miracle of, of this COVID thing mm -hmm. for all these is we've kept having through this pandemic. Mm -hmm. That's right. We've had babies. Yes. All through the pandemic. Oh, yeah. Yes. Some days Reborn. Yep. the house was full. That's right. We've had twins. We, I mean, we've had just life. Just, yeah. you know, birthing life in the midst where everyone just felt helpless. And, and even hopeless. the there mothers had reunions. Yes, we've had reunions. Yeah. <laughs> and Can you all imagine these the babies, mothers they're little back. toddlers. They're like little two-year-olds and one-year-olds running around the house. It's so amazing. <laughs> There's nothing like it. 25 Two-year-olds yes, running around. It's beautiful. It's so <laughs> awesome. We love it. It's life. Yes. It Amen. Amen. So the, the baby's born at Lori's house. Mm -hmm. You know what? They can't take that away. That's no. Right. Absolutely. You know, I had a letter the other day that I was, it was one of those letters that said, I, I want to write you, Pastor Jim, to tell you, thank you for building the girls' home at Heritage. Yeah. Oh. Because, yes. Yes. And she just th went on and on to tell uh. her story and thanked you so much. But what she did was she said, because you, you my life was saved mm. from being uh, aborted. Yeah. Wow. She said, now I have my two beautiful wow. children. Amen. Yes. And she said, so because of you being obedient to the Lord, yeah. building that home and saving her that she now is raising her two children wow. for God. God. And she is was so excited oh. about it and wrote this beautiful letter. You know, I, I wish we could get maybe Shirley Forward to come back and help me dig through our boxes because she goes back to she, my secretary about 20 years. Yeah, you know. 25 years, Shirley. But, we miss you, but Shirley. In those, <laughs> but, but, Lori, somewhere in those boxes are some of the letters from prison. Yeah. And what I did is is I got letters from the mother, and their, their ch children were teenagers. Wow. That were born at Lori's, not Lori's house, at you Heritage the girls House. Home, Heritage, mm-hmm. Can you imagine? Yeah. It, it, well. And that was when I would look at those pictures it's and, and they would thank me wow. for their life. Mm -hmm. And it would be like, devil, you're a liar. Yes. You, he you, is you, a liar. You, 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 you know, I may Father be in prison, life. but these kids live on. That's mm. right. And Amen. I'd love to show you some of them. But I mean, to now they probably have kids of their own and, yeah. and all, you know. Oh. Yeah, and grandkids. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, got to throw a little hey, humor in there, I'm folks. an old, old man. <laughs> oh, I had another story I was going to tell you about uh -huh. it. But, but uh, th this, this is something I have to talk about once in a while. Yeah. Because the, the babies is something that I've done my whole life is saving mm -hmm. babies. Yeah, and, you sure With have. God's help. And it means something. Yeah. You know, we even did it back in the 70s when when you really took a stand against abortion and you actually showed babies that had been aborted. Aborted baby. And, and you know, 
and in the dumpsters, in, in the, the behind back, the and, abortion clinic. Yeah. Then they would just throw them in big barrels. Back back in those days, absolutely. And on the top of one of the barrels, when they opened up the lid, was a full term baby. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, I mean, and I they almost took you, got thrown out of the. <laughs> well, and they industry. took and well, and they took. You and they off did. They the, took and, me off know, from the the secular stations. Yeah. took You off the air. But I'm back on in New York. Can you That's believe that? That's right. That, that was yeah. what took me. They come over to New York and they said that was too, too uh, graphic. Yeah, it was evil to show that. Right. But but you but they had, they had, you know, nudity on te- on television at that time in the evenings in New York, but they they took our television program off the air at that point. But we've been fighting that kind of thing, prejudice. And all I tell the world and say to America, you know, you let everything go. You have pornography on the Internet everywhere. You have every, And yet you want to stop the voice of the church. They make the Ten Commandments illegal. Th- something that would put quality and good into the life. Mm-hmm. And I think it's time the church stand up. You don't have to apologize. God is something to stand for. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. And we have with us Pastor Troy Brewer today. And uh, Pastor Brewer is the pastor of Open Door Church in Burleson, Texas. And he is an amazing teacher of the gospel. And his new book, Redeeming Your Timeline, Redeeming Your Timeline, and if you haven't ordered this book, you need to order it today. It's for a gift of only, I think, $20. Yes. Am yes. I right? That's yes, right. $20 donation, and that includes the shipping and handling. So when a person is redeemed, how does time work differently than it does for those who are not redeemed? Well, you know what, Pastor Jim, redemption changes absolutely everything. Here over the past few minutes, you've been talking about, by the way, I've really enjoyed the passion and so enjoyed how relational you guys are and how that you're talking about, dude, they're trying to shut down our narrative. Well, of course they're trying to shut down the narrative. You know, they call good evil and they call evil good. And that is a huge, huge, huge marker telling us that Jesus is coming back soon. As a matter of fact, it says in Daniel, it says in the book of Daniel, it says that um, that whenever the Antichrist actually raises up, it says that he will cast truth down in the streets, that truth will not even be allowed, and truth will be cast down in the street. But know this, know this. The church is still going to have a voice. The people of God are going to rally together. There's going to be community. There's going to be tribe. And all these petty differences and divisions we've had between us are not going to work because unity makes us a conduit of God's power. Um, What I am seeing in you guys, saving people and saving babies and being there and being faithful throughout the years, that is a demonstration of God's goodness. And that's that's what is required these days. Um, In talking about the timeline, Um, You were talking about earlier as well that it just seems like time is speeding up. Time is speeding up. And we know that time is relative. And one of the things that time is relative to is to the imminent and the glorious return of the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, the Bible says that the days will be shortened. That's what the Bible says, that right before the return of King Jesus, the the days will be shortened for the elect's sake. So what does that mean? It means that for our sake, things are speeding up and And the bad news of that is things get really bad really fast. The good news is there's never been a day that you can get things so right so quickly as this day because we're living in accelerated time frames. When we're living in a redemptive redemptive time frame, our accelerated times move us into a blessing that is greater and greater and further and further and higher and higher, and it happens much, much, much quicker. How can a person overcome guilt and shame that can be paralyzing? That's something that, my God, you don't know the pain in people's hearts. Mondo, we worked in the inner city for, I don't know, it's 20 years ago, I guess, when we met somebody. But the the, the guilt and the shame when the people would come in from the streets and all, that was probably one of the big things people had to come overcome. 
Absolutely. It paralyzes you emotionally. When you're reminded that you're a piece of garbage, that you're not worth to be sitting at the table of influence, to break the demonic curses from the past, that shame and that guilt has kept people in the inner city locked down. And and, and I want to tell you something, to unlock that, it takes a lot of mentoring, a lot of discipline, yeah. a lot yeah. of discipleship, but it holds people down. You know, it makes me think of me. It's taken me 20 years to overcome yeah. that battle, but it's been because I've been consistent in the Word of God, you know, learning from you, learning from the men and women of God that come around in my life, but it's a true emotion, and I think that's the number one paralyzing emotion that we deal with, yeah. the, 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 the pain of abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexually abuse. Those are paralyzing to someone. And I love that in this book, chapter 19 in this book talks about how do we redeem those painful moments? How yeah. do we overcome yeah. those painful yeah. moments? I got my breakthrough and I saw you get your breakthrough by serving the people back, yeah. right? That service, that was healing uh, for me. I began to see you come out of that shell the moment you began to serve the community. The and Open Door Church teaches that. Yes. And, you know, and and in the inner city, I was there. I was a lost soul, really. I came out of prison. I knew God and everything, but I didn't plan to preach again. I, I didn't know where I would go. I, I, I was afraid. I was scared of my own shadow. I was afraid they'll spit on me. And so Tommy Barnett let me live there. And I, I loved it. Yes. I absolutely, I lived, it, it become our world. And I met Lori there. And then we got married. And we had our own world. We've had our old world since. That God builds. And, and you know, it seems like, you know, the, in prison, the devil would say, you're, you're through, you, you've blown it, you know. And then God gives you a new beginning. God makes all things new. Amen. And, and remember, we, you and I and, and Lori, you're a part of it. Mm -hmm. We were rescuing people all the time. Oh. And I love the Dream Center. But at times, they had to have rules. Can you imagine all these thousands of people coming? Some are drug addicts. They're in the street. And they, they come in, and they have to deal with them. That's right. They have to discipline them. Oh, and absolutely. And so they would, finally somebody would break the rules too much, and they'd have to be asked to leave. And, and most people don't get it, but you have to have rules if you're going to have a, some type of center like that. And then here we were. Three musketeers. We're always <laughs> trying to give them extra time. Right. Get them to let us bring them back. Mm -hmm. Bring this person back and help them again. And we we got it. We yeah. got some of them back. Yeah, we know. did. But it's it's an unusual ministry because it's a ministry of ministries. Yes. And all working together there in that under that roof there. There's hundreds of ministries, really, probably. Yes. You oh, absolutely. And I think it relates to where we are now in, in, the, in the phrase that they've used to describe how people have become paralyzed is the snowflake generation. They really become paralyzed. This is real. So when you talk about anxiety, that that is a real issue that we deal with. And it is paralyzing a generation, especially Gen Z, the millennial generation, the snowflake generation is paralyzing compared to your generation, that mom's generation, that you guys have learned to work through the crisis. You overcome the crisis through working together. But this is a real thing. The paralyzation of the emotion and the shame, the guilt from the past is keeping us down. But we have learned when you read this book, you're going to have the keys in your hand on how to overcome that shame yeah. that you have felt. Yeah, so Troy, please... And just broaden that out a little bit and help us answer this. How can we overcome guilt and shame that people's, the devil puts it on you. My grandpa used to say, the devil's so mean he knocks you down and then he kicks you for falling. 
<laughs> and and that that's what happened. They get knocked down, and then they're in guilt all the time. See, the thing about about guilt and shame is this: is that is that shame says that you're wrong. It's something's wrong with you. That you're. That's what shame says. And of course, guilt is just. Um, it, it just you're just feeling guilty, remorseful. But shame says you're some. There's something wrong with you. There's some. You're wrong. And that is not what. That's that's straight from the pit of hell. Wouldn't you agree, Pastor Troy? Yes, ma'am. There is no shame in heaven. There is not. And if it's not in heaven, it shouldn't be on earth. We should be consistently praying and constantly trying to bring. How can we bring the will of God, the heart of Jesus? How can we make our world around us look a whole lot more like heaven than it looks like hell? We don't want it to look like hell. And I want to just tell you that uh, I also recognize at the same exact time, a big part of it is the church has been guilty. We as church leaders have been guilty of not equipping people to be emotionally intelligent and to be tough and to get through it. And I, you know this, I know this, as you're trying to prepare people for tough times ahead, that we are all the kind of people that are saying this. The Lord is not calling us into safe, pristine places. He's calling us into very, very, very dangerous places. And he's saying, He's saying, "Lo, I'm with you always, even to the ends of the world." And one of the one of the understandings of is is to the end of time, and another understanding is literally off the map. In those scary places where everything is not mapped out, Jesus is saying, "Look for me there. I'm there in that place, in that place where everybody says, "No, I'm not comfortable with that, or I'm not going to do that, or I might get in trouble, or I might uh, have somebody's prejudice come against me. I might I might be persecuted. You may." Jesus sends us out as lambs among wolves, and we are called to be a battleship. We are not called to be a cruise ship. You know, I think it's very prophetic that the cruise ship industry all over the world has been shut down. It's very prophetic because the cruise ship part of us as the body of Jesus has been shut down. And I think that a lot of us are very well equipped for a lamb-like move of God, but we are totally ill-equipped when it comes to a lion-like move of God. And these days require a lion-like move of God, not just a lamb-like move of God, but actually a lion-like move of God. And one of the things that you have to do is you have to get tenacious about going, I refuse to have this non-redeemed part of my life remain there as this shameful, horrible place that happened 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or two years ago, whatever it is, that is continuing to plague me right now. It's causing me to have bad relationships. It's causing me to have anxiety. It's causing me to be addicted. A lot of people don't know that they can literally invite the presence of Jesus into their own life. And once redemption comes in, not just into your now, but into your back then, It'll actually change your right now because Jesus Christ is not subject to time and he is not subject to space. He is not subject to matter no matter what. Um, I've seen some incredibly shameful places in my life. I like to share one of those with you where Jesus came in and changed the shame into incredible honor. Is it okay if I tell you about that? Yes, we'd love to. Here's something that's that uh, like one of the I've, I've had a lot. I've made a lot of mistakes in my past, as we all have. But what's real is and I've also suffered incredible failure and you will suffer failure for anybody that thinks that they'll never fail. That's ridiculous. But what's great is the Lord doesn't call you to be successful in all things. He's called you to be fruitful in all things. He's called you to be victorious in all things. And so he's not asking us to bring something that's flawless. He's not asking us to bring a harvest that is weedless. No, he's not. We're supposed to present the harvest to him, weeds and all. And the Bible says that the Lord of the harvest, he will separate those weeds for us. And that's his incredible mercy whenever it comes to acts of redemption. Um, when I was a very young man, I was... Um, to make a long story short, I signed up for Bible college, and I was in my very early 20s, and I went to a certain Bible college that I will not name, and um, a world it was a world-famous Bible college at the time, and uh, I went to this. My grandfather paid for it. 
I, I had a music contract. I was playing in a Christian band. I quit everything because I just wanted the word. I just was a word guy and I wanted to get off into it. I was there and the first night, uh, Pastor Jim was like the greatest night forever I'd ever had. There were people from all over the world. It was incredible. Oh, a great move of God. The chapel service was amazing. And then the next morning I got up and we had breakfast and I was so excited about the day. And I heard him say over the loudspeaker, Will Troy Brewer from Joshua, Texas, Troy Brewer from Joshua, Texas, please report to the dean's office? And I was like, okay. You know what I thought? I was so young and so arrogant. I thought, they have found out that I'm here and what a great musician I am, and they're going to ask me to be a part of the praise and worship team. That's it. Like, oh, okay, they know I'm here. So I track down to the dean's office. I get down to the dean's office. And this man meets with me, and I was just so excited. And he's like, Troy, how was your first night? And I was like, it was amazing. He's like, what really stands out to you? I said that there's every nationality and every race and so many different nations, and everybody loves Jesus, and I've never seen anything like that before. It's remarkable to me. And then he asked me this question, Pastor Jim. He said, and Mondo, you imagine, just just try to imagine this. He says, "Did you did you notice any, any fat kids? Did you notice any grossly obese kids? And I weighed a whole lot more back then than I do right now. And I was like, no, as a matter of fact, I think I'm the only fat man on the campus. I think that's me. I'm the only fat guy. And he said, yes, you are. And that's a problem. And I want to tell you, they kicked me off of the campus. They, I was literally thrown out of Bible college because I was too fat. And he said, we didn't realize how overweight you were, and that's a bad testimony, and they kicked me out. It was so shameful. I, I cannot tell you how shameful it was. I had to call my grandfather and go, I'm too fat to go to Bible college, and I was crying and everything. He's like, what? And they didn't, they, they really did me wrong in a lot of ways. And I went back and joined my Christian band, and we toured, and I ended up getting married and everything ended up working and it was great, except for I had this very shameful thing in my history, a very painful thing that really hurt extremely bad. So uh, in 2016, I was on John Paul Jackson's show and we started doing all kinds of stuff. And I had written a book nearly 20 years before that called Numbers That Preach. And it's on how prophetic numbers in the Bible speak. And I got this phone call from our, from my book publisher saying that we were selling like tens of thousands of books. And I was like, I wrote that book 20 years ago. How in the world could that be? And here's what happened. What happened was this. He said, your book is now required reading in theological seminaries all over the world. And that happened. And by the way, that was a prophecy that John Paul had given to me. Another uh, famous prophet had also prophesied that to me, that your books will be required reading in theological seminaries. And I would think, well, I hope nobody finds out that I was thrown out of Bible college because nobody ever buy that book. And then I got thinking about it and I thought, you know what? I wonder if that Bible college that threw me out has my book in it. And I called them and they did. Pastor Jim, the Lord came in and redeemed that thing in my life in such a powerful way that he's using this fat guy to teach those skinny kids how to study the Bible. And that's how real redemption is if you bring it in. It changes shame into something that is honorable. Boom. I love this story. <laughs> It's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful. And, and you powerful know, story. and the story. It's in the book, right? It's in the book. It's in chapter 21 redeeming a time of great shame mm. into a time of great honor. Wow. Amen. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. I was uh, kicked out of Bible school because I got married <laughs> when I was in Bible school. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but they gave me an honorary doctorate afterwards. So, so you know. Wow. And then I went to prison. Oh, so I'm, I'm, oh, I've, I've had quite a life. Oh, but, uh, wow. you know, we've been through such an attack this year on us and our ministry. And uh, it's just been the most... <sighs> prison was bad, but this last year, 
Can I use some bad English? Batter. batter. <laughs> is there such a word as batter? <laughs> it was worse. Wow. As far as I was imprisoned in, in my own home. And, of course, with the COVID thing, we were out here anyway. It was so we had to leave our studio, and we've been in this little room, which used to be my office. Mm -hmm. And then to have the stroke and all the other things and have them, you know, write about us, the same people that are trying to destroy Franklin Graham. The same, it's the same group that wrote about us and got people to sign to take us off the air and, and all that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, I was always taught to live and let live. You know what I mean? I was just, it's just, that was just something that, and there, you, you just don't have that. This cancel culture doesn't believe in live and let live. No, sir. It means you kill the enemy. You kill and destroy the voice of all of those who disagree with what you teach and what you, you bring forth. So how do we deal with this? How do we, you know, and I'm getting ready to go back to our studio, the one that, that uh, we've been in for years, but we, we, it's a big studio, and I would love to be back there because I'm getting a little claustrophobic being in my basement all these times. How do we deal with you know, like what we've been through, they took several million dollars from us, which the, the same people who put us in the news and mm -hmm. the petitions, petitions mm -hmm. against us to try to get us off the air and or take trying to take us off the air and, and trying to get lawsuits. I think the, 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 the evil stuff they wrote about us, and it was all lies. I mean, it wasn't even true, mm -hmm. you know. And... I couldn't bear with it, and because then when they took the money, I knew without the money to pay the bills, we're through. Mm -hmm. So they took several million dollars, and it's just all legal. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's why people got to understand. It's going to be using courts and lawyers and law, law things, and that's what they did when they took Heritage USA from me. Exactly. They used lawyers yes they hired a lawyer with my own money they mm. as soon as they took over my office they wrote a check for a half a million dollars as the retainer for the lawyer who took away my ministry from me exactly wow. i paid for it right <laughs> wow. paid for my own destruction yes i mean i didn't mean to because i wasn't signing the checks and it, it was they had taken over but how do we overcome a time of great injustice and there's other people out there that these last few years have been a lot of injustice. There's people losing their homes. They're losing their businesses. Yeah. They're losing their stores. They're losing That's their right. restaurants. They're losing mm. so much. Share a little bit more about redeeming the time of great injustice. You know, Jesus loves to bring justice. He does. And that's a big, huge part of redemption is the Lord King Jesus, he actually brings justice with him. And I want to tell you, number one, I want to tell you, sir, I'm so sorry for all that you've been through this last year. And I'm sorry because there is suffering and there is persecution. And a lot of people that are watching have suffered incredible loss and they've suffered incredible persecution. Um, I have friends all over the world and our teams all over the world and we have seen incredibly difficult and hard things. And I don't want to make light of any of those things because those things are dark and they are evil and they are terrible. I think that the shift that has to take place has to do with a couple of different things because it reminds me of the book, um, A Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times and the worst of times. And I think that the closer that we get to the return of King Jesus, the more extreme things are going to be. That the things that are good and the breakthroughs that we're seeing are incredibly amazing. And also the things that are against us are mounting. And both of those things are going on at the same exact time. So Jesus talked about if your eye is evil, then your entire body is evil. And it has to do with the lens of how we're able to see things. Now, I can be in a terribly 
a terrible situation and be experiencing great, great, great pain. And what's real is I can't help but feel that. I can't help but feel the pressure. I mean, it's real. But I'm not alone. And I'm when I say I'm not alone, I say, I mean, I have the I have the ability, the God-given grace to literally invite the presence of Jesus into this situation, not just to bless me from there and send a blessing towards me, but to actually step into this with me. As I know that you have over and over and over again throughout the years, you wouldn't be alive if you didn't have the presence of Jesus within your life. And so we all know that. But there's there is a way that we can literally... You know, Brother Jim, this great injustice I was talking about of me being thrown out of Bible college when I was a young man, uh, it wasn't until 2015 or 2014 that I literally just stopped, just went, I need to quit. I have been so ashamed of that, and it hurt so bad, and it was such a bad time in my life, and it spun me off a little bit. I need to invite the Lord back into that place, literally into it, not just metaphorically, but ask for the manifest presence of Jesus. And that's the glory of God. And we know that whenever Brother Moses, he said, Lord, I want to see your glory. I want to see your glory. God said, okay, I shall cause my goodness to pass before you. That when God shows up in his glorious way, or what is it? It's his visible awesomeness. It's his tangible presence. Uh, Our Hebrew brothers and sisters call it the weighty presence of God. He shows up as goodness. And we know that goodness overcomes evil. The Bible says, do not be overcome with evil, but rather overcome evil with good. And goodness is attached to the manifest presence of Jesus. And so I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, you're not subject to time. You know, you're, (laughs) it doesn't matter if I invite you into now or into my future, into my past, you're not subject to time in any way whatsoever. Lord God, be with me on that day that that man spoke so shamefully to me. Be with me on that day where my heart was so broken be with me on that day, Lord God, and I rely upon you. And then boom, it changed my now. And all of a sudden, that same exact Bible college began to require its students to read my book. Well, that ask inviting the Lord into that place and asking and believing in the power of redemption is everything for us as believers. To literally see the goodness of God, to taste and see that the Lord is good. Personally experience that. So what's real is we're going to suffer. We we are going to suffer persecution. We are going to suffer hard times. We are going to have things taken away from us. But what's real is this. Where sin does abound, grace does much more abound. And we will not be dismayed. We will not stop. We will not fall back. We will not just decide to, we're going to sit around and rock back and forth and freak out. That's not what we're going to do. Man, we're going to be the people of God and we can, and we can have courage because we know that God is with us. And that's what the Lord told Brother Joshua, have courage, have courage, have courage, for I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you. Being able to see the presence of Jesus and view everything from the lens of, I'm not alone and God is with me, is everything. And we need to pray for a greater and greater, greater eye to be able to see that. What a, what a privilege to have you on the show today. I, I, I just want people to be able to read the book to be able to overcome mm-hmm. the attacks of Satan. Yeah. Because he'll tell you, you failed, you're no That's good. That's right. And I know a lot of people would like to have seen me go away, but I, I just keep coming back. You're still standing. Amen. I'm there still standing is. because God, I won't say no to God. Amen. If God says, keep preaching, I'll keep preaching. Amen. You know, there's preachers who want to get rid of me and who helped to get rid of me before. But <laughs> God... God has a different plan for He's, you. Well, absolutely. You know. And that's why everybody needs to get this book. It really is going to minister to you. You Ro- are Our friend to Robert Henderson for, wrote the, the forward. forward to mm-hmm. this book. Mm-hmm. He sure did. And then great people like Rabbi uh, Jason uh, Sobel, who will be with us just in just a day or two. Jimmy Evans. I mean, oh, my goodness, we learned so much from him. And so many other people. Patricia King, who was just on our broadcast, yeah. who have endorsed this book. But what I, you know, really got Sean Bolt. I mean, come on, people, Sean Bolt. But anyway, um, it, I think what really got me about the book is redeeming your timeline guides 
uh, you through a personal encounter with Jesus to overcoming paralyzing guilt and shame, conquer the grip, uh, crippling fear of failure, silence the whispers of anxiety, break free from the bonds of childhood trauma, experience freedom from panic attacks, discover deep, lasting inner peace. So when you give an offering today yes. of $25, That's right. just ask for Redeeming Your Timeline book. And that includes shipping and handling. Amen. That's, amen. <laughs> and or that, you can that, get the friends that, and family offer. You can receive three of them for a $55 donation to the ministry and give these out to the people you love and know. Or maybe like, you know me, I keep them in my car and, and someone comes the wrong, along the pathway of my life and the Holy Spirit will, will say, Lori, this person needs it and just give it to them and they'll be like blown away. But I will say something that you really have taught me to today and through your book, Pastor Troy is you've really given me an understanding. Like I really never had before a new revelation of on redeeming our, not just our past and not just our present, but our future. It's really, you guys, this is supernatural. I, I know the supernatural and I believe in it. And, and I know what it does when you're in the world and the supernatural of the world, which is demonic. And I also know the supernatural of Jesus Christ, God, the father and the Holy spirit. And I will tell you this, that's what this book is. This is a supernatural book because this is what Jesus came to die on the cross, shed his precious, innocent blood. As I love how you say it, Pastor Troy, King Jesus. He's King Jesus. And he died on the cross for us. And if you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, now is the time just to say, ask, to ask him into your heart. You Amen. Believe that he died on the cross with his precious, innocent blood and to help you become everything that God's created you to be by what? Redeeming the time that the enemy came to still kill and destroy from you. You can't allow it any longer. So now's the time. Order the books. Call us at 1 888 988 158. 88 or go to the website jimbakershow.com or write us at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri 65615. Marcel, you'll get these out right away. Yes, absolutely. Call us and we'll get them shipped. It's a brand to your new home. book. It's from one of our publishers That's that right. we use a lot. Yes. That delivered to us, right? Amen. Destiny yes. Image, isn't yes. that the Destiny book? Great publisher. We love yeah. them. Yeah. We do. I want to offer my two books today. I, okay. We did it. We offered one yesterday, but could we put the package of those two? We have these in stock right now. That's right. We have The Refuge, A Look into the Future and the Power of Living in a Christian Community. And then we're also going to add The Prosperity and the Coming Apocalypse, Avoiding the Dangers of Materialistic Christianity in the End Times. These books are more relevant today, so you have to get your hands on them for a $30 donation to the ministry that includes the shipping and handling, and you're helping us to stay on the air when you give. I'll tell you, the book Prosperity in the Coming Apocalypse shook the yes, Christian world when absolutely. it came out. I got more invitations to go preach, especially on, you know, churches that didn't believe in yes. prosperity. They thought, oh, Jim finally saw the light. Well, <laughs> I, I do believe in prosperity. I believe God blesses. Right. I believe without God's blessing, we're in trouble. But it's the love of money that I'm against. I'm not. A, but pros, how prosperity is so dangerous in the coming of what the apocalypse on earth. Yes. And this is raw from prison, that prosperity and the coming apocalypse. And that's a very, very important book. Those two books, if you want to know why I went to prison, those two books are the two books that need to be read yes. for yeah. what's now. This yes. These are now books. Absolutely. These are more now books than they when I wrote them. Right. You wrote, the, you wrote Prosperity and the Coming Apocalypse in 1998, and then you wrote The Refuge in 
2000. And you always said, honey, you always said one day these are going to be bestsellers. We have them available for a $30 donation, and that includes shipping and handling. So that's a great deal. Really so they get is. both books? Both books. Two books. For, for $30. For $30 donation to the ministry. So I just want people to get it because they're not going to be around forever. I'm serious about that. They, they're limited yes. editions now. They're in the warehouse, and that's it. That's all there is in the world is what's in the warehouse or in a bookstore. But, oh, I mean, a used bookstore because yes. they're not in a, any new bookstore because they're not available at all anymore. But they're the most important books I think I've ever wrote. I think I Was Wrong is, was important, oh, and we still yes. have I Was Wrong. Yes. Uh, Yes, that's available for a $30 donation to the ministry, and that also includes the shipping and handling. That's over 700 pages in that one book. Yeah, that book Quite today, that, that book on today's market would probably have to be like a $35 book yes, at least. absolutely. $35, $40, because it's 700 pages. Yes. It's, a, it's a big book, but it's the story yeah. of how I went to prison, why I went to prison, and the prison years. Amazing. Is, and I, anybody would like to order that, they can also get that. That's exactly right. We only have a couple minutes left, honey. So is there a question you'd like to ask? Oh, Pastor a million Troy? questions I, I want to ask him. Well, he's going to have to come back. And uh, I, I want to ask him just about, is there any experience uh, that you can talk about where people have had freedom from panic attacks? Do, so could you just talk about that before we go off the air, Pastor Troy? I sure can. You know, what's real is sometimes your soul and your body will team up together to beat you up. And that's just, that's just real. We know that our soul is our mind and our will and our emotions and then our physical body. And sometimes and we just get underneath such stress. And sometimes we don't even realize it's happening and how we process things and how we process the pain of all the stuff that we're involved in. It'll get together and it will cause everything to get out of alignment. And it is so real. I have actually experienced a panic attack before and I thought I was having a heart attack. I mean, I thought I was, and I wasn't even, I didn't even realize the anxiety I was under. It was just, it manifested as anxiety because of all the pressure that I was under. You know, we say boys and girls out of sexual trafficking all over the world, and we had been doing some crazy stuff. And this pressure was mounting up and mounting up and mounting up. And I want to tell you, Pastor Jim, uh, this is like four years ago. I just went, uh oh, you know what? And I sat down. And just went, well, that makes sense. This is not good. And suddenly, man, the Lord spoke to me and told me. He just said, hey. He said, that's not what this is. And I went, I don't know what this is. And I started praying about it and praying about it and praying about it. I called my wife. I had her come get me, and she did. And I literally had to go, okay, I'm out of alignment, and I'm out of sync. My body is out of sync, and my soul is out of sync. And I need to bring it all in alignment with my spirit and with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I began to systematically invite King Jesus into every single thing that I was worried about, into every single burden that I was carrying. You know, he loves to carry our burdens. He does. But we have to develop skill sets on how do we let him carry those burdens. And then as soon as I did, I want to tell you, man, the Lord, the Lord removed that. And I, I want to say this, and then I'll close on this and say this, that the, the devil will attack you with anxiety and panic attacks at very specific times to cause you to miss certain moments of great creativity that the Lord wants you to walk in because anxiety is the kryptonite to great creativity. And there are ideas that are coming to God's people today. There are next level things that are coming to the people of God that we don't want to miss because we're fighting this and because we're fighting this terrible battle of horrible anxiety. We're so happy to have you here today, and I hope we you are. keep our people in, in prayer. Uh, could you pray right now quickly? Do we have a few seconds yes, here? Yes, absolutely. Would you just lead a, a simple prayer for the, the healing of our people? Yes. I declare peace. Peace in the name of King Jesus. Father God, I ask you, sir, in the name of Jesus, let your kingdom, which is all about peace, Rule and reign 
and all of this ministry and everyone who is a part of it. I declare in the name of King Jesus that light maketh manifest. And I pray, Father God, sir, that your manifest presence, Lord God, was shine into the darkness. And I declare that there's nothing that the darkness can do about it. Where there are lies, let there be truth. Where there is death, let there be life. Where there is a spirit of halt, let there be great advancement. Father God, sir, we call upon your redemption And we plead the blood of Jesus, and we thank you, God, for your magnificent presence, sir, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. 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 Our special guest, Troy, Pastor Troy Brewer. Yes. Great man of God. Great Yes, he is. Order his book today, be sure, Redeeming Your Timeline. Yes. Marcelo. Powerful. Power. I know people are ordering a new product that you had developed, um, and it's and it's amazing, and I love it. Yeah. I haven't gotten my case yet of them. I have just So what is bottle. that new product? That's right. <laughs> this is the new product that we have that we want to make sure you take advantage of to add to your preparedness tools, and that is the hand sanitizer with vitamin E. You'll receive one case of 12 8-ounce hand sanitizers with vitamin E included in that, and that's for a donation of $50 to the ministry, and that includes shipping and handling. So an entire case of 12 bottles in that package right there that we'll be sending to you and that includes the shipping and handling with that $50 donation and we just like to provide resources those are add. big bottles aren't yes, they that's they're right not, these are the bottles right they're not little right tiny here. bottles these are no, big these bottles are great. And you get a dozen of the bottles. Yes, and in they a have a case. great citrus smell, Thank which you. I absolutely love. They do, and and vitamin E. Yes. so it I think it's lead I you. think that they yeah. say call it citrus, but yes, it, it's it's. Uh, it smells so yes, much like orange. It does. But I love that we're able to provide. Continue always looking for new resources to bring I mean, to you. I dare you to smell other hand sanitizer. <laughs> oh, I mean, we do. I, ever since we got this, I've been smelling every because everywhere I go, I'm, right. you know, running it's the just free part ones. Of life you know, now it is part And of life. I had one yesterday that it smelled like yeah. rotten something. You know, yeah. it was really bad. Yeah. This is this is delightful. <laughs> That's right. It has a citrus smell and it's over 70% alcohol, which is beneficial to cleaning the skin, yes. which is great. And as you mentioned, Dad, each bottle is eight ounces. And so you receive 12 of those in one package for a $50 donation to the ministry. That's right. And it's that vitamin E makes your hands soft. Yes. yes. And your skin it soft. It sure does. So not, it, doesn't, it doesn't make it dry. Dry. That's yes. it. That's yeah, right. that's great. So... Every item you order is a part of supporting this ministry. Amen. And we just appreciate it so very, very, very much. We do. And we've been fighting to stay alive, and God's people are helping us. Thank you. Every time you order anything, it's saying, I want you to stay alive. I want you to be blessed and stay on the air. Well, we want to thank Pastor Troy Brewer for being with us today. We hope you order his book, Redeeming Your Timeline. And God willing, we're going to have some guests in the next few weeks that you don't want to miss because God has just blessed us with favor in the prophetic world. So remember that God loves you. He really does. He really does. Bye-bye for today. Bye-bye. We love you. Thank you, Pastor Troy. 